mercenaries, drones and commando forces. The UK's possible solutions to make war more acceptable. The military has come up with a list of recommendations to ease the nation's war fatigue and drum up support for military campaigns. Artie's Laura Smith examines the methods being looked at. How to sell a war to a British public that's not buying. That's the topic of the latest study by the Ministry of Defence, reacting to what the paper calls a wrong assumption that the British people has become risk averse. In a nutshell, the paper says it's not that people don't want war, it's that they don't understand how it will benefit them. So in an effort to explain war better, the think tank makes some recommendations. First, make a large investment into drones, suggesting that if people in foreign countries are killed at arm's length, the British public won't mind so much. Second, use more contractors, aka mercenaries, rather than British soldiers, to lessen worries about casualties. Third, use more special forces soldiers, because apparently the loss of elite soldiers doesn't have such an impact on the public, because their role is perceived as inherently more risky. And fourth, something military families are already calling disgraceful, reduce the profile of repatriation ceremonies, processions of hearses carrying coffins draped in the Union Jack when bodies are brought back from Afghanistan. But a war-weary British public isn't keen on having its opinion swayed and is particularly adamant about keeping repatriation ceremonies in the public eye. Yeah, I think they should be respected for what they've done and we should be aware of it. War is just not acceptable, full stop. Uh, and I, I don't think there's anything they can do or say or, or uh, organise or publish to make war any more palatable than it is and it should be avoided wherever possible. I think basically they shouldn't be going to war at all. We'd probably try and avoid war rather than try and make it sound a bit nicer. Interestingly, the paper appears prescient as it was written before the British Parliament voted against getting involved in Syria under the immense weight of public opinion. But it seems unlikely that the public will be manipulated into supporting conflict quite as easily as this. Even the Ministry of Defence admits that the current aversion to war is a result of a people that's better informed and an opposition that's more sophisticated.